So here we are looking at section 3.8, which is optimization with multivariable functions. So we're familiar with optimization with the idea of local and relative extrema from R2. And we begin our transition here to talk about local and relative extrema in R3. So higher dimensions, so R3 and above. And the definitions are parallel, are, are a natural extension from R2 into R3. And so we want to begin by letting z equal f of xy be some function in R3. We want to let the ordered pair a, b, and r2 be some point that sits on our surface f, where a and b are real numbers. And when you're considering this point, you want to consider a small region or an open disk around that point, just like we do in r2 when we think about a small region around x. And so just to remind you, so here's our familiar Cartesian coordinate system. If we say there's your critical point, right? when you're talking about local extrema, you're thinking about a small region around that point. The same thing happens in R2. We think about a small region or an open disk around this ordered pair. And so we can even tr transition this quite easily right there into three dimensions. So here are our two definitions. We have that F is a local or relative maxima if the following holds true. So if F of X, Y is less than or equal to f at that point a, b for all points x, y within that open disk, then the function has a relative or local maxima at the ordered pair a, b. Similarly, we have that f has a local or relative minima if the following holds true, so for, if we find that f of x, y is greater than or equal to the function evaluated at that point a, b for all points within that open disk, then our function is said to have a relative or local minima. A relative or local minima at that point a, b. So these definitions are familiar to us, even though we've, we've introduced a, a second variable, they hold true with what we know from two dimensions. Now, I want you to keep in mind that this is, these are not the only extrema that we can have in three dimensions. We'll also need to introduce one more extrema. So to help us introduce that new type of extrema, we want to consider the graph of the hyperbolic paraboloid. And in particular here, I want us to focus on the origin. So let's let a b be equal to the ordered pair 0, 0, and r2. And again, if we're thinking about this on the graph, we have this ordered triplet here, 0, 0, 0. So this is our focal point. And what we want to do is consider an open disk around this point. So I'm just going to say, here's an open disk around that point. And what we want to do is think about how this surface is changing as we move along different directions. If you want to think about or observe how F changes as we move in different directions. So let's think about it as we're moving along the x-axis. Case one. So we want to think about what's going on as we think about points moving along this x-axis here. So we're thinking about our x-axis. Right, so as x is getting bigger and bigger, or smaller and smaller, think about how your surface is changing. We have this parabolic shape here. And we really only need to consider 
what's within that open disk. So if we let the origin be, or if we evaluate our surface at the origin f of 0, 0, we can see that for any other ordered pair, right, for some arbitrary point x, y, whether it's on the left or whether it's on the right, it's always going to be greater than f of, at the origin. Right, so based on our, our definitions of extrema, this would indicate that f would be a local or relative minima. But let's now consider what happens as we move along the y-axis. So we want to think about what's going on as we move along our y-axis here. So we're thinking about as y gets bigger and bigger, or y gets smaller and smaller. And if it helps, draw yourself a little trace curve. But we can see we have a, another parabolic curve, but this parabolic curve is concave down. So again, if we think about some arbitrary point on either side, so thinking about evaluating at some point x, y, and r2, we can see in their second case here, that the surface evaluated at the origin is going to be larger. It's greater than or equal to f of x, y. So by definition, this is indicating to us that we're going to have a relative maxima at this point. So we have something that looks like a relative or local minima, and then something that also looks like a relative maxima. So we call this type of point a saddle point. And this means that as you move in different directions, sometimes you're moving uphill, like we did in case two, while another time, oops, excuse me, as we did in case one, we're moving uphill, while in other directions you're moving downhill, as we did in case two. So if we considered a small region or open disk centered at some point, specifically the origin here, on the surface of f, we say that our function f has a saddle point at the ordered pair a, b, if f of x, y is greater than f of a, b for some points, and f of x, y is less than f of a, b, ran out of room, for other points. So sometimes it's a maxima, sometimes it's a minima. So that is our third extrema here in three dimensions. So we have local maxima, local minima, and saddle points.